Coming to you live from New Canaan High School, Ian Nicholas, Brendan Tiscornia, and the rest of the NCTV crew bringing you this live action. New Canaan, the boys basketball team, well, they are buzzing like never before. 7-1 coming off back-to-back -back wins up against previously undefeated teams. On Tuesday, they traveled to Staples. They beat Staples by 9. And then on Wednesday, one of the craziest games we have seen in quite some time from this gymnasium. 64 to 59 in double overtime. The Rams over the Richfield Tigers. And now, Brendan, they have their third big test of the week, and they're looking to go 3 and 0 up against the 5 and 2 Wilton Warriors. We're going to bring you all that coverage and all that good stuff in just a few moments after our PA announcer, Bill Brown, brings us through the starting lineups and brings us through the national anthem. But before we get to all of that, Brendan, what is going to be the biggest storyline of this game, in your opinion? They're down 16-2, to two and uh, all of a sudden, they're right back in this one. A 15-5 to five run for the Rams, finally showing signs of life and finally showing the people who didn't tune in to that Wednesday game what kind of team this really is. We know New Canaan plays their best brand of ball in the second half, but tell us about the first half, Brendan. What got New Canaan back in the game, and what got the Rams their mojo? It's a lot easier for everyone to shoot as a team. Speaking of shooters, Steven Panzano, he definitely had a great second quarter. He really provided a punch off the bench. And uh, for Wilton, scoring-wise, Josh White, the leader, he really showed people why he's going to be an all-FCA caliber player this year. He made big shot after big shot. He certainly was. New Canaan still trails four, 21 to 17. But speaking of people who never trail, our sponsors. Let's look at those phenomenal local businesses. Two critical mistakes made at the end of the game, Brendan, by both teams. Will Bazella the travel, and then Parker Woodring, the five-second violation. But in the end, the team that started the game hot finished the game hot, and Wilton winning. And they didn't even have to head to the free throw line. Well, you're exactly right, Ian. That first quarter really was the difference in this game. New Canaan coaches stress it so much. They definitely do, and they will definitely be preaching that in the post-game speeches. Still plenty of games left to go for both of these teams, but one thing's for sure. We will see plenty more of them, not only in the regular season, but in the FCAC tournament. they got to get into what they do best, which is running their offense slowly and not being rushed by Norwalk. And speaking of a guy who can move the offense along, Maddox joining us here tonight on the call for our first three-man booth of the year, getting all the analysis you could possibly get. A guy who moves the offense really well for New Canaan is Blake Wilson. Although he might not have the ball in his hands all the time, 13.5 points per game over his last six. He scored double digits in five of his last six. Described by Will Bazella as a three-level scorer, really, Blake, the sophomore, he can do it all. It's 10-9. White on the other end, loses the ball. Magnus making plays on both ends of a hardwood. Magnus has been the MVP player right now for New Canaan, as he was before his injury, and he's showing it right now. Panzano also coming back from injury, showing the emotion in draining the three ball right in front of Joel Garriak, New Canaan, on a 4-0 run, up 13-9. Comes up short, rebound, Iben. Richfield sets up quickly, pull up three for Nakel, and he banks it in. The bank is open at 7:27 on a Tuesday night from Richfield, and Coach Danny Melzer needs a timeout, his team down four. You can't be rattled in this late a game. Pull up from Pilk, not a good bounce, rebound, for Bramwitt, Magnus in transition, and he gets it to go down over A.J. Barber. New Canaan starting to run away with it, extending the lead to seven. If I know Leo, I know he wanted to dunk that. Magnus is loose. Will he dunk this one? No, but he gets the and one bucket. Leo Magnus putting this game away in the closing stages. And he'll head to the line for one more. Far side of the floor, James Mockler. Passes intercepted by Leo Magnus. Fast break opportunity, and he puts it down with two hands. That's your traditional New Canaan hops right there. Am I right, or am I wrong? Ball stolen by Blake Wilson. He makes big plays in big moments. He goes up with it, and it's going to be an and one. Blake Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. Sotel holds it. Nine seconds. He gets the double screen. Pin just jacks up for three, and he splashes it in. Davion Pin in takeover mode. That shot won't fall off the pole that supports the backboard, and Davion Pin, an emerging star for this Stanford team. His length and his underrated strength. 
The steal for New Canaan. Wilson, the lead pass. Watch out below. Leo Magnus for jam. Bazella lasering it over in the corner to Griffin Bramwitt. Blake Wilson from the far corner. Drilling it. The marksman connecting. And New Canaan extends the lead to five. These two teams can both be Richfield. Or Darian, who knows? Anything can happen. It's March. Let's see how this one shakes up. Christian Sweeney, the three, it goes in. To complete the layup. Pump fake from White, a smooth move, and a score from three for number three. The second triple today for Josh White. Bazella, good pass to Magnus. Good finesse inside in the and one from the Colorado College bound, Leo Magnus. Zipping it barber to barber style and Chasen finishes off the assist from AJ. Nakel, quickness to the left, and one! Matthew Nakel is turning it up another notch in the semifinals. Wilson looking for his second three, and Jason Barber says, no thanks, let me block that. Bramwood floating it up to Magnus, he's doubled quickly. Dump off, open, Panzano capitalizing. And that's just what happens when you have a player like Leo Magnus, Brendan. He draws the attention. Spinning and getting it back out to Pin, who shoots his shot and Fish pulls it in. Davion Pin is lighting it up for the new Canaan High School gym. Baseline, hop step, Wilson, physical, can't get it to go, neither can Bazella. Another rebound, falling to the floor, it will count. Blake Wilson, a superstar finish. Still a two point game. New Canaan led by seven after one and Greenwich has cut the lead very nicely. The press still active. Arnold to the hoop and hard. Euro step move for Dan Arnold. And it's a tied game for the first time since it was 2 2. Bazella losing it, getting it down low. Blake Wilson, the and one turnaround shot. Another massive play from him this quarter. Gray off the screen, working against a close friend of his off the floor, and Leo Magnus, the star of this New Canaan team. In the corner, DeFabio lets it rip and in. The corner three connecting. Richfield retakes the lead. Panzano is hot. Maybe not. Missing on the lay-in. Willis guns it to Sabi. The three denied by Panzano. Rebound for Leo Magnus. An excellent block on the shot from McMahon. I'm a very big fan of that rule, no shot clock in the state of Connecticut. The arena missing, but nobody saw the five foot nine point guard. He just goes right into the lane and gets his own miss and scores. Amani Edwards, a junior, and Nate Shear, a senior captain of this Norwalk team, check into the game. Blake Wilson off a smooth feed from Will Bazella finally breaks this scoreless affair. Timeout from coach Matt Whelan. 4.43 left to go in the opening quarter. Pass is snatched away by Portowundo. On the move, it's Jackson. Jackson is gonna get the end. Wonderful. Gavin Bramwick committing the crime. Bazella off the inbound. Christian Sweeney corner three, and he converts off the Bazella fee. Made four threes last game and picking up where he left off. The three up. The three in with some contact. He won't get the foul, but he gets the three. Josh White with five. Strong response from New Canaan to start the quarter after that 8-0 run against them to end the first. Nakel to his left. Hop step, finishing no. Called for another charge is Richfield. And Mulcahy fell like a domino. A long possession developing. Magnus will pull up from three and drill it. A much needed response from the Rams. They've been known to hold it for upwards of a minute towards the end of a quarter or a half. It really looks like New Canaan so far has shown no intention of trying to score the ball yet. Now 20 seconds left to go. Maybe they won't hold for the shot, and that's a smart choice. Christian Sweeney, the pull-up shot. Picking people's pockets all night long. And White has been scoring all night long. Josh White up to double digits now with that layer. Bazella, aggressive. He's fouled. Attacking the lane. The freshman, Griffin Bramwitt, to inbound. Preston presses him. Bazella to his left, an open lane, but he gives it up to Christian Sweeney. Right back to Bazella and an and one finish. Off the feed from Christian Sweeney. That's the great two-man game right there between those two very close senior captains. 
And it looks like junior Ned Brady is going to check in the game for New Canaan. Carson Drake called for the foul. And New Canaan, foul trouble for Dennis Mulcahy with four. They're going to check in number 44, the junior big Ned Brady. Coach Melzer telling me before the game, heck, he didn't even know if Ned was going to play for them this year because his number one sport is football. He's a phenomenal offensive tackle for the football team. Will most likely be playing Division I football. But he was very excited with what Ned was able to do over the two games without many of their rotation players this week. Bazella missing the free throw, so two points. Four point lead for the Rams. Carson Drake guarded by Brady. He loses it. Bazella is loose, but the defense catches up to him. Brady, now that's why he's a lineman. Lineman can't catch. And he drops the ball on that one. Well, Brady is a player, he's a lot like Dennis Mulcahy. He, he's someone who, he's not necessarily gonna score all the points in the world, but he definitely makes an impact in the, when he's in the game. Speaking of impact, Will Bazella, the steal and the score. An excellent game for number 14. <laughs> New Canaan extending the lead to six, trying to put away the blue wave. Will Darien Derry have one more spark left in him? Baseline, it's Dahl, dishing it off to Fiorita. And he gets the and one. The five foot nine junior has shocked, surprised, in good ways for this Darien team. That's his second, that's the second basket in the paint for the diminutive Fiorina. I wish he busted out a celebration calling the new Canaan players too little or something, I mean. He is just imposing his will, making the plays that Darian needs right now. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's why I said it. <laughs> Maybe we'll get one more before this game is over. Too much mustard on that free throw as well from him. He's 0 for 2 from the line. Rebound Panzano. Yep. Four point lead for the Rams. Bazella, hop step, men at the hoop, and fouled as he does a little bit of a cartwheel to pick himself up. It's another foul from Drake as he is uh, furious by the call. I believe that's three on him. It's gonna go on John Fiorita, his first. Not uh, Carson Drake as Ned Brady looks to check right back into this one. Maybe looking to use Drake on the, excuse me, it looks like maybe Coach Melzer is trying to sub out Brady for offensive possessions, but keep him for defensive ones. Well, he does. He is a great defender. Uh, he he started the two games on during the week this week, mm -hmm. and he did a great job uh, in the absence of both Braden Sweeney and Dennis Mulcahy. New Canaan, they weren't sure how Ned would fare, but uh, he survived. He definitely did his job. Put up two points in that game up against Dan Barry and New Canaan really left with zero bigs with both Mulcahy and Braden Sweeney out of the lineup. Amir Preston off the dribble, shoots for three. Man in his grill! Straight cash in the face of Panzano. But Darian sleeping on defense and one with the roll! Christian Sweeney on the other end. Talk about a response. This happened to New Canaan and Dan Barry last week. They were caught celebrating. And the other team goes right down the floor and scores on the other side. They certainly had reason to celebrate as Preston goes over to talk with Will Bazella from the opposition. He's probably like, are you kidding? I just hit the best shot of my career and you couldn't let me celebrate for a minute? Sweeney misses the free throw and he is called for the foul as Fiorita gets that rebound. New Canaan. The lead back up to five. 5.49 left to go in his fourth quarter. Ian Nicholas, Brendan Tiscornia, and the rest of the NCTV crew bringing you this live action. Now Darian is in the double bonus, so Fiorito will shoot two. Good observation. Brendan Fiorita makes his first free throw of the afternoon as Panzano and Gavin Bramwit, excuse me, Griffin Bramwit, check in for Braden Sweeney and Ned Brady. And the freshman's getting some very important minutes on the stretch here. Well, we saw it in game one up against Ludlow. That game going down to the wire as well. And Coach Melzer opting to go to his freshman ball handler. 
Fiorita makes both. Three point game. Bazella open lane. No foul, he falls. Drake ripping away the rebound from Magnus. Darianne looking to set up shop on the other end. Preston, a beam down low, and Fiorita is taking over. An unlikely hero for Darianne in this game. Where there's a will, there's a way for the five foot nine guard. Christian Sweeney to his right, and that's too easy off the screen. Timeout called by Coach Troy Bentley in a game he knows his team can win, but they can't seem to get right back in it. New Canaan and Christian Sweeney down the stretch right now, Brendan. They have gone blow for blow with the blue wave.